I mer- I was in and out of school, in and out of the hospital, and I missed so many days. And and I started to think that like my teachers and everyone would think that I was a liar because it was a lot of days. And then basically, I was in and out because I could not figure out what was wrong with me. They tried everything, um, and finally, in an X-ray, it came up. It sounds gross, but it's just a part of life. Um, it showed that I was just like way backed up with stool. Um, you could see it in the X-ray. So one doctor finally found that. I never took health seriously like I do now. Like I thought health was looking in the mirror and saying, "Okay, great, I look skinny." I didn't realize it was so much more than that. Um, so I would experience like really bad brain fog, inflammation, constipation has like you know been a thing all my life. But the brain fog was a big one. So the brain fog would make me go in and out of feeling motivated and almost like a sense of purpose. Melissa Bologna, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. Uh, we recently came acro- across each other's path, and uh, it's been really fun. I was just telling you offline, really fun researching your backstory, which is very interesting. And some of the things you discovered to help improve your health and how you're taking that message and that pain to promise story to serve other people with your new company, which we'll get into. But I want to go back to you, 16 years old, 15 years old, high school, missing school so often because you kept going to the doctor with frequent health issues. So what was happening back then with you? Yeah, it was pretty wild times. Um, I'm, I was in and out of school, in and out of the hospital and I missed so many days and, and I started to think that like my teachers and everyone would think that I was a liar because it was a lot of days. And then I remember one time I was in the hospital and I was so out of it and I was so ill and I saw our vice principal, Mrs. I think it's like Matitsky. Or the, M- she Matitsky. might be listening. Uh, no, I, I, I remember her. I, the name's similar to that, but she might be listening. Mrs. Uh, M. Yeah, Mrs. M. Um, and she saw me there and and I was like, once again, out of it. And she was like, Melissa. And I was like, yeah. And and then obviously, you know, she knew I wasn't bluffing because I missed so many days. And then basically I was in and out because I could not figure out what was wrong with me. They tried everything. Um, and finally in an X-ray, it came up. It sounds gross, but it's just a part of life. Um, it showed that I was just like way backed up with stool. Um, you could see it in the x-ray. So one doctor finally found that. And then, um, you know, he put me on a bunch of stuff to obviously relieve that and try to get it more consistent. Um, but it made me very, very ill and not having, you know, overlies and figuring out what was wrong. And um, it followed me into adulthood, but at least into adulthood, I kind of knew what was going on and knew the measures I had to take um, so I'll, I'll stop there because I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get into that. But you know, I'm curious the the recommendations or the protocol the doctors gave you. They were more like medical based, like medicine and things of that nature. It wasn't something that if someone told me today to do that I would do. Like he put me on like at like Phillips laxatives, which you get at CVS, mm. and an antidepressant. Mm. And I remember like, you know, I was a kid. So the second I found out it was an antidepressant, I was like, what the hell? And I, I'm not depressed. And so I stopped taking it. But then I found out later on that it actually helps with the whole process. But, you know, that's not something I would have done knowing what I know now through this whole health journey and obviously research on food and gut health that I've done as an adult. Yeah, I mean, that's typical of uh, Western medicine, you know, looking at, at Band-Aids and symptoms and kind of chasing the symptoms. And yeah, there's no doubt there's a use for uh, Western medicine and they change lives, saves lives for emergencies. But the root cause is not being addressed with what you were going through. So it got better. And then you became a model and actress and you started, you know, doing different things in, in Hollywood. At what, at what age did you move to Hollywood? Um, right when I graduated college, so I would say, I would say around like 22 years old, I moved to LA. So New Jersey to LA. In New Jersey, New York, LA. New Jersey, New York, LA. Okay. So, I mean, at least you went from big city to big city. Yeah. <laughs> 
And you were doing your thing, model, actress. So what were some of the symptoms you were experiencing back then? So I was, I never took health seriously like I do now. Like I thought health was looking in the mirror and saying, okay, great, I look skinny. I didn't realize it was so much more than that. Um, so I would experience like really bad brain fog, inflammation, constipation has like, you know, been a thing all my life. Um, and, you know, if I wasn't constipated, it was like IBS. Mm. So just a lot of symptoms like that. But the brain fog was a big one. So the brain fog would make me go in and out of feeling motivated and almost like a sense of purpose. Um and, you know, I, I realized, too, when I was younger, looking back on it, I definitely had, like, bad anxiety. Not, like, bad, bad, but, you know, some of the things I do now, like, such as, like, you know, going to events and um, doing things with crowds. Like, I couldn't do that in my early 20s. I had, like, chronic, like, crowd anxiety and stuff like that. Um, so, and anxiety comes from the gut. So, I guess it makes yeah. a little bit of sense. But, you know, I, I've calmed down a bit in my older age. Yeah, no, I can totally relate to that, being in large crowds and starting to panic. Yeah, you're right, because the gut and the brain speak to each other via a nerve called the vagus nerve. So whatever happens in the gut happens in the brain and vice versa. So if you have leaky gut, uh, gut dysbiosis, which it sounds like you had, then there's a whole bunch of proteins going into your bloodstream. There's neuroinflammation. And then it's hard to focus. It's hard to um, perform as an actress, right? To, to remember your line. So what were some of the, how did, I want to know, because I think this is really relatable to the person listening, whether, you know, they're probably not an actress or an actor, but they are, want to be productive. They have relationships. So how was this affecting your productivity and relationships? Um, it, it would just make me, it, it would it would definitely took me i mean i i got the method down of learning lines but i would have to do go the extra mile right like write them three times over sleep on it left right up and down which i could have probably done it way more efficiently but i'm not kidding you like i know we're gonna get into it but what helped why i created a whole company what helped my brain fog was bone broth period which also is directly related to the gut. So effectively helping and aiding my gut, it, it, that's what got rid of the brain fog. And that's so much so that it motivated me to start, motivated me to start a whole company. Yeah. A whole new industry and, and do a well, whole new venture. Yeah. So it's a, a bit ironic that a large symptom it cleared up. It also made me start a company based on it. Um, but it truly helped me. And I never realized how bad it was until the fog was effectively lifted. And how did you discover bone broth? I know it was uh, your sister who played a role with that. So what's the story there? Yeah. So initially, you know, she was obviously aware of my digestive issues growing up. And then, you know, I'd be on set for acting. And you, sometimes you'll work some like really weird hours. You'll work regular hours one day. Then the next day you're working like 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. So your body is just going in all these crazy directions. And then they have these crafty stations with M&Ms, everything, you name it. So what do you do at 2 a.m. when you're trying to stay awake and bored before you're up? You just kind of like binge eat. Yeah, that's why they called you the cookie monster as a kid. <laughs> exactly. There, there's some truth to that. It probably links to all my digestive issues. Love cookies. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was doing all, all this eating at weird hours and a lot of sweets, primarily cookies and M&Ms, um, which you know, it would make me feel sick and inflamed and ultimately more brain fog. So my sister kept trying to have me try bone broth to have me fix the inflammation, have me fix the brain fog, the digestive issues. And initially I kept telling her no, because, you know, my sister gets extreme on things. Like when she was like super into biohacking, like she's done it all. Now she's into spirituality. She's doing it all. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I have an open mind. I'm willing to try, but some of this stuff is too crazy for me. So I hear the word bone broth and I'm like, that's just bizarre, not happening. Then finally I'm like desperate. I'm like, all right, give me this bone broth. And I tried it and it wasn't how it tasted at all. It's not how you picture it, the kind of image you get in your mind. And actually tasted really good, really nourishing. I, I like to call it the gateway drug because, you know, we're talking offline, how something changed our life. This, this changed my life. Um, 
in, in a lot of different ways with the biggest being the whole brain fog element. And I couldn't believe that a beverage I was drinking after doing so many things, you know, to help get rid of my brain fog or so many things to help my skin, um, that this was the thing, just a hot drink um, with a myriad of health benefits, obviously, that did the trick for me, which made me completely passionate about it. Yeah, I love that. I love that you um, discovered it through your pain because then a lot of people who have stories who are doing some cool things in this world, uh, it comes from a, a painful time in their life and they take that pain to purpose promise, similar to my story. So what are some of your favorite benefits of bone broth? Like I know you started to research it, also using it, but what were some of your favorite benefits that started to pop up as you started to use it? So obviously as I, as I passionate about the brain fog, that was just a huge shock to me. And knowing what I know now, it's obviously related to the gut. So, uh, you know, you need bone broth, but it's also, it's a two part with bone broth, the bone broth itself and the gut. Um, another favorite one was the collagen. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, you know, obviously collagen is a scaffolding to the skin. It's not only, you know, to look beautiful hair, skin, nails, but it's in our joints. But one thing I noticed, like being in acting, like I was getting Botox since age of 24, 25. And I was a smiley kid, you know, cookie monster. <laughs> so I would get like really bad crow's feet. So I'd always Botox that. And the second the Botox faded, retired, whatever you want to call it, the lines were back in full force. And I was just like, ah, and wanted to get to the doctor before anyone saw me. And from drinking bone broth, that timer, that timer I speak of completely went away. Where now, like, I, I barely get it. Um, if at all, because having that drink truly, truly helped with fine lines and wrinkles. And so my, my sister was the biohacking world and I was like the beauty world. Right. So she started getting like lines here. So I'd be like, Michelle, stop frowning, stop holding tension, Botox, Botox. So, but she was, you know, bad witch, good witch. She right. was with the bone broth and, um, so her solution actually helped um, my skin and she started drinking it all the time with me and it helped her lines too. So that was a favorite one. Um, another favorite one for me is after I do a workout, I get super, super hungry. So I want to eat everything in sight and I don't care what it is because I feel I'm justified for it since I worked out. Um, so I'll have bone broth and not only does it fill me with all the amino acids and essential nutrients and it curbs my craving. So it makes me feel very satisfied and um, makes me eat a much lighter meal after that for dinner, what have you. Um, what else do I love about bone broth? As, as oxymoron as it sounds, it gives me natural energy during the daytime and helps me sleep at the nighttime. Sounds crazy, but it's true. Um, and just overall regulating my gut health. And that means so many things like your gut's responsible for your emotions, right? And you don't want to be an up and down person. So having my gut regulated is so important to me to, to stay motivated, to stay maintained, to stay happy, healthy, and all the things that come with it. And obviously keeping my immunity up, which I'm really, really proud of my immunity. Um, for a lot of reasons I won't get into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I love that. I, I love bone broth myself. I talk, I talk a lot about bone broth and we'll get into the difference between beauty and the broth, which is a great name versus regular grocery store bone broth. A lot of the stuff out there, they're hopping on the trend of bone broth, but it's not the same. You're not going to get the same benefits that we're referring to here. My audience, of course they do keto, they go, portion of my audience is carnivore. And here's where I'm going to mention where bone broth could come into play here, intermittent fasting as well. Um, people who eat, who do keto or do carnivore, they typically eat a lot of meat and I'm not against meat, but they're typically eating a lot of muscle meat. Yeah, You're staying away from organ meat, which is not a good idea because when you eat a lot of muscle meat, it creates an imbalance in two amino acids. So methionine and glycine. And when you eat a lot of muscle meat, it creates high methionine in the body and it has lower, you have a lower uh, glycine. 
uh, bone broth is high in glycine and it helps you balance out that ratio, which is going to help with something called methylation, which is just the gears and switches of your body and how it works. And that's, I think part of the, the big reason why you started to feel so good. And a lot of people feel good when they drink bone broth, because you start to balance out these amino acids. So in that aspect, those who are doing, who are doing carnivore, bone broth would be amazing for you. Those who are eating a lot of muscle meat, bone broth would be amazing for you because this bone broth is loaded in glycine. Uh, anything you want to add to that before I continue here? Okay. No, I, I think that's great. We'll cover um, the deeper product stuff later. Yeah. yeah, well, I want to get into your specific products. But then another benefit to bone broth, bone broth is the best thing to break a fast with. And intermittent fasting is amazing. A lot of people will undo many of the benefits from their fast by bringing it the wrong way. Like, for example, you said when you work out, you break up, you break the fast with bone broth. It's the best thing to break a fast with. You could also do like an extended three day fast with just bone broth. I have people do that sometimes really repairs the gut. So there's many uses for bone broth, but let's get into why beauty in the broth is different than the standard bone broth you're going to find at the grocery shelf. What, what makes your product different? Yeah. So I feel extremely fortunate um, to end up at this with not, at this product um, because it took a lot of twists and turns. Um, but what makes us incredibly unique is it's shelf stable, no preservatives and in concentrated format, which will, uh, which is big. Yeah. And, and I have it for those watching on YouTube. Like this is it right here. <laughs> you can see it concentrated. I just had some right now. My fiance, we added it with hot water to you explain how that works, but yeah. So it's super, super easy. It's in concentrated format. So if you go, you know, to the shop or supermarket and get a cup of bone broth or jar, what have you, and pour it into a cup. Bone broth is measured in bricks, which is the percentage of so solid components in the broth. So your average cup of broth is about three bricks. In that pouch, you see it's 25 bricks. So you are getting the most potent, most condensed down product that's very, very, very hard to do. We have advanced technology where effectively it's being filtered and steamed and steamed and steamed to condense down. Um, so I'm very proud of that. And, awesome. you know, as you say, you just need our recommended eight, eight ounces of hot water. I have some male customers that literally take that pouch and just swig it, which is without added water. They just, which is without adding water. They just go for the gold. I personally love adding the eight ounces of water because I like it as a habitual drink, but yeah. classic male. <laughs> yeah, totally. And when I first drink, uh, tried it today, um, I noticed that it tastes different than most bone broth. It's a lot less gamey. And that's a big yeah. drawback to people doing bone broth. They're like, it's too gamey. But this is a very mild uh, taste in that aspect. And it tastes pretty good, actually. Yes, that was a big thing for me. I didn't want it too gamey or weak. So I eliminated both those issues with the chicken. You have luxury ingredients like turmeric and ginger in it with the beef. You have mushrooms and kelp and leeks. Um, so definitely not gamey. Definitely all very clean ingredients you recognize. No gums or anything. And also in the beef and chicken recipes, there's no salt added. So it's low in sodium for a bone broth, which is wild. I speak with a lot of nutritionists that recommend their clients to make it at home for this reason alone, that it's high in sodium. So it's, it's actually not that. And it's massively convenient to use. It's three ounces of poaching concentrate. I will literally bring it on an airplane. It's three ounces. And all you ask for is some hot water. You mix it in there. Boom. Cause there's so much, you know, bad food on these airlines as well. And, it, it's great for the plane. You, you're not yeah. doing a lot of good to yourself by traveling up in the air. So it's good to just have something that keeps your stomach easy. Um, and you can really bring it anywhere. Like how many broths could you take on vacation with you on a business trip? That That's not only just like any broth, something that's really reputably sourced. We're animal GAP welfare rated four, which is as high as you could get. We're all USA organic. Um, and you recognize every single ingredient, which is also... You know, when I tell people sourcing their bone broths, always look at the ingredients because you'll be really, really surprised to what you see on there. Yeah, no, I love all that. You're speaking my language there. I, lo I love the idea of taking it with you when you travel. So three ounces means you could take it on as carry on because it's under that three point whatever, two or three point four. 
limits. Is that correct? So you yeah. take it with you. Can, okay. You can only take one though, right? Because it's, I mean, I love to push the limit. Uh, <laughs> I will try more than one. Yeah. We'll all travel with a bunch, right? So I'm always giving out samples or doing tasting. Yeah. So like, like 20 in my bag. And or you've gone people. through. I've gone through every time. One time I got stopped because I think I was like flying um, internationally. And the guy was like, what is this? And I was like, it's my company. He's like, well, if I don't know what it is, I've seen everything. And I was just like, sir, we're, we're a startup. Calm down. Um, but then he, he even eventually let me go. And he let me know I'm not supposed to have this much quantity of it. But mm. hey, you either have to have the gift of gab or just bring, you can bring, you know, you could also check it in your suitcase, but physically on the plane, you could bring a few. Yeah, no, it's a good call. I'm traveling on Sunday, so I'm going to give it a shot. I'll see what happens. We got a special guest, your dog. Yes, What's the dog's dude. name? Special guest. <laughs> hey, buddy. What's his name? Paco. Hey, Paco. <laughs> he, he too has gut issues. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, a lot of dogs do. My dog's sleeping right here, too, by the way. I, I love oh. dogs. Um, you know, another good use for, for parents out there who have children, I mean, and you're on the go, like this is a great fix. If your teenage daughter or teenage son is hungry, warm this up with water. If you're on the go, <laughs> warm it up with water. What are some other uses you've seen, some practical uses for these uh, bone broths? So two things. One, it's I cook a lot and sometimes I'm in a pinch. It's the ultimate cooking hack. Because it's like a marinade, it's a seasoning, it's a soup base, and you're getting all the same benefit. So it, it's such a cheat code because, you know, you season things, right? You want it to taste good, but, you know, there's stuff in seasoning too that's not so great. So I use it all the time, like with, you know, I'll marinate shrimp with it. I'll sometimes mm. maybe not with mine. It's too nice. But sometimes I'll steam vegetables with bone broth. Um, yes, that's a good idea. I haven't, yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Huh? I have some customers that will, this is the ultimate hack, pour it on leftovers because it actually makes it really moist. You're getting the same benefit and it helps the leftovers. So that's another good one. Hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. I, I haven't even tried that. So you could add it to your vegetables, add it to leftovers. How do you, how do you use it with like, if you're cooking meat, is there any way to use it with like red meat or something like that can you yeah i mean i make so many different recipes with it like i've made um like chicken enchiladas with it hmm. i think i'll just literally you know cook it with in the broth um especially since it's more it's gelatinous and more like a gel that it's not like a ton of liquid that needs to evaporate so you know it's way easier to cook in this format too with things like chicken or red meat and what would, if somebody never tried bone broth and they end up buying Beauty in the Broth and they start drinking it, what would be the recommendation? How often should they drink it? And when on average would the person start noticing some of the benefits? So I recommend having a cup a day, uh, at least at least for the first two or three weeks, and which is when you'll start to see benefit. I personally saw it in two weeks. They say 30 days to see change in anything. I say two weeks. Um, so the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, as um, it usually is, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I would recommend having it every day, at least for two weeks, and then maybe like three times a week after you start seeing a lot of change. That's great. And keep in mind, it does break your fast, uh, but it's a, the best thing to break your fast with. So when you're ready to break your fast, have the bone broth. It's considered a bone broth fast, but it doesn't break a traditional fast. For those wondering, I'm sure that's a question that came up for somebody. Uh, how did you come up with the name Beauty and the Broth? Where did that come from? So it took a while because, you know, initially, you know, I was thinking of names like Bone Tox and people were like, that sounds toxic. They were right. Um, and I'm really happy with, I came up with the name 100% by myself, which I'm proud of because I didn't even name my dog Paco. My sister did. Um, and you know, people were throwing ideas at me and it came because I am such a big kid and I love Disney films growing up and I love beauty and the beast. It was probably my favorite Disney film growing up. Um, so, and I thought it was punny and, you know, I'm not giving myself credit here, but looking back at it, it was a genius name. I didn't realize how genius it was until the company launched because we truly now cross over into the beauty sector. 
We already get the health and wellness people, the people who already know about bone broth. But now we're getting a whole new pool of people that we really cross over into beauty, whereas other bone broth companies do not. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And also yeah. makes me happy for the, these this pool of people because it will change their life. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a brilliant name. And by the way, for those who want to get the product, we put a link down below, whether you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, the link's down below to get it. How does it work? Is it just like a subscription, a one-off? How, how does it work to buy the product? So we offer it both ways, one-time purchase, or you could just subscribe to our boxes. Um, we offered an 8, 12, 18, and 24 packs. It comes with a very cool rice husk BPA-free cup with yeah, a hot that's, sleeve. That's this right here, right? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and that's very cool because it's 99% rice husks and the cup is also microwave safe so you could either use put the pour the contents of the pouch in there and then add hot water from a kettle or put in hot water and microwave it whatever you know if you're in the workplace wherever whatever you could get to have the broth yeah it's very easy to do subscription is a brilliant idea uh that way you don't have to worry about it i would say structure trumps intention so if you could have a structure in place and have the bone broth you're not going to be like a cookie monster and finding yourself trying to get some cookies because you're getting full from the protein and the, and the bone broth. Um, now, let's go back to you real quick. You know, you had all those health issues. You started to experience many, many benefits from the bone broth. Like, what is, how is your health now? There are other areas you're exploring. How does your health look like today? My, health, my general health looks really good. I will say I got hypothyroid. Um, but I think that's for different reasons. Funny enough, behind me, I'm doing a bunch of tests with Dr. Will Cole. We um, love him, by the way. He's been on the show four times. He's like amazing, amazing. Yeah, my audience loved Will. Literally 18 vials of blood today. <laughs> so I'll learn to love him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, but I think that that occurred for different reasons. I think that occurred. I had coronavirus two years ago almost to the date and i think that effectively released um hypothyroid because i was all good before that so it's fine health is a journey um but ironically i created the best snack for myself with hypothyroid so that's pretty cool the best what a snack for myself what, what do you oh i mean the bone broth, bone broth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's better than cookies that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's a blessing so yeah it's interesting you know when your body goes through um a stressful period, like getting COVID or whatever it is, and you already had your stress bucket full from whatever reason, then it could be the thing that triggers it, right? So it could have been that, the last straw that that broke the camel's back. But you're in great hands with Dr. Will Cole. He's a really smart guy, and he's going to get to the root cause of uh, what's going on. I'm so excited about it. Um, and they're even like looking into mold, something it's so genius, something I never even thought of. I had... Um, an apartment that got beyond molded, but I never slept in there at night because, you know, my maid found it all molded. And I was like, oh my God, contacted the building, refused to sleep there. But then the people from his office were like, what did you do with the furniture? And I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> eek, eek, eek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that carries, that carries. So you took it with you and uh, oh, yeah. exposure. Yeah. Eek. So yeah. So, I mean, that's great because so many people are so unaware of that. I, I was also mold uh, exposed to nasty black mold in my old house and I did a number on my health. And then I was mercury poisoned from my eight silver fillings, which did a number on my health. But oh it's, my it's, it's you like you have no idea unless you start to research and do these things or work with somebody. So, yeah, you're in good hands with him. They'll get to the root cause. And I've seen hypothyroidism. Is, is it Hashimoto's or is it not? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Just okay. hypothyroid. Yeah, and I've seen I've seen that correct itself with you know getting to the interference, removing the interference. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with your health. And uh, yeah, bone broth is a great way to reduce inflammation. It's very easy. It's downstream. You don't have to do eighteen vials of blood. Now that might be necessary for some people, but a very easy thing to do right now is to get some bone broth into your into your stomach, into your body. Um, totally. So. Um, you could buy Beauty in the Broth down below. Your website is awesome. The branding is awesome. I just did an Instagram story, you know, with the box that you sent me. And uh, I think the branding is on point. Uh, what is your, like, what's your goal with Beauty in the Broth? What do you, where do you see it in the next five years? 
So this summer, I'm very excited. We're launching Beauty in the Bark, which will be a bone broth for dogs. We are, uh, yes. Of I course. Know. I mean, you love dogs, so why not? Oh, of course. I'm getting a third one. <laughs> yes. So I'm very excited about that. And, you know, I get to sample all of them. So it's human grade and it's like really good. <laughs> um, so you can have it for yourself and the dog. Um, we're also working on a turkey recipe to launch for this holiday season. We launched the vegan recipe as you have there. Um, and then, you know, the next five to 10 years, I'm very excited. I, I see us scaling a lot more to be more mainstream in all the grocery stores. We just finished this awesome new box that I'm really excited by to, um, fulfill second subscription orders um, because people actually complain it's a lot of packaging um, and you know you could request a cup at any time but you know we listen to the customers and so and that box will also be used for mainstream retail and then I see ultimately going into skincare like having bone broth as the base of some of these uh, skin cares the molecules of bone broth the, co the collagen in it the collagen molecules are smaller than those in face cream so uh, the sky's the limit i just see it as a way of life as a real part of the routine i, I see it on airplanes airports stadiums because mm -hmm. if you have coffee and tea there why wouldn't you have bone broth it's it serves a similar purpose except it's way healthier and and way better for the gut like and i think all the information coming out on the gut microbiome is absolutely wild and it's being taken way more seriously day after day. Uh, so I think one day it will be included like that. That's a great goal. I love that. I love Beauty in the Bark. It's a great name. I'll get some for my dog Ziggy as well. Yeah. And now I could just see my audience hearing about collagen being more beneficial to your skin than most skincare products. And I, I could just see them buying a whole bunch of bone broth and doing a bone broth bath. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> just bathing. Not a bad idea. Bath bombs. <laughs> not a bad idea. Don't drink it. Just bathe Don't in it. Don't drink it. Just bathe in it. <laughs> have, the bomb, have the bomb. <laughs> exactly. Are you still doing your actress, uh, your, uh, acting and your modeling career? Or is that your new transition now? Well, this is the fun part. I do it for Beauty and the Broth. They have a free model. They have a free That's girl true. to start cooking videos. They have free person to do podcast and it's yeah. <laughs> um, That's true. Yeah, so it's my full-time job. And I have to say, my whole acting and modeling career has very much prepped me for this, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, that's crazy that you were, you are an actress and you, I'm just curious, like, how is it stressful to be in these films and shows, et cetera? Like, what is the stress like as an actress? It's very stressful, very yeah. stressful. It's a lot of pressure. Um, and, you know, also remembering a bunch of lines is no small feat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you put a lot of pressure to do the best you can to be comfortable on camera. Um, but, you know, I've had years and years of experience with it at this point that it's gotten me very comfortable. Um, and you know, looking back on those moments, you know, it was very rewarding, but also very stressful at times. What's your highlight looking back at your acting career? What's your like which film or no? I mean, it doesn't have to be a film. Just like the biggest highlight, your favorite moment of your acting career. There's a few of them. Um, one film I did got into the Cannes Film Festival, so that was a really awesome. big highlight. It was it was a real whirlwind, and then um, you know a different film I did it got it did really really well in the festival circuit. Um, that was the year of Spectacular Men. Awesome. And then this film I did with Bruce Willis, like I still like to this day get messages and mail and everything about it. Um, so that's rewarding. So it's heavily seen. Yeah, that's awesome. And what's the funniest moment from your acting career? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. What do we got? What do we got here? It's, I'll think of a new one. <laughs> oh, good. I think it's hilarious, but your average person hearing it would be absolutely mortified. Well, and now you got to share it because we're intrigued. No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I should switch it. I should switch well, it. Well, we could, we, I'll hear it. And then if I, I'll decide if I'll cut it out or not. 
Okay. Like, uh, so I have a very weird personality where I don't get embarrassed. Like, it takes a lot for me to get embarrassed. Hmm, interesting. No, this is pretty bad. I don't know if I should say this. I could cut it out. I'll, I'll, ju- I'll, I'll decide. Go ahead. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So we were on this set in this house in Louisville, Kentucky. And it was a house. Like, it had real Picassos in it. It, it was insane. Like they had like an actual, like real tiger rug, which is illegal. Wow. And all their furniture was museum quality. So they were massively, insanely strict. No one could sit on any furniture. Only actors in the scene. If you weren't in a scene, you couldn't even sit. They just had like these really uncomfortable chairs set up. It, the place was treated like a crime scene, like Dexter. <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> what happened to the furniture? So <laughs> this is so bad. I can't believe I'm telling you this. So I'm about we're about to shoot the scene, and the scene was me where I played the little sister, my my brother and his fiance in the film. We're shooting this scene, and it's taking a while. You know, they get in different angles, and I just I don't know. I felt something, and I got up. And let's just say on their museum quality sofa, there was a scene from that time of the month. Uh-huh. And it was a bit ironic because, you know, it's a little, little bit of karma because they were like insanely strict about it. And it, like it's, it, it was, they were insane over the top strict about it. And obviously like this was out of anyone's control. Like it just came out of nowhere. And I'll never forget, like, the director treated it like someone was murdered. Oh, my gosh. He was like, cover it with a towel. I'm like, I'm like, like, Melissa, Melissa gave to the bathroom. And I'm just like, guys, relax. Like, it's fine. It's blood. Like, and he's, like, acting like someone died there. And then they're, like, knocking the bathroom. Like, hey, like, acting like a crisis counselor. I'm like, guys, it's fine. Like, you know, it's like it happens to females once a month. Like, I'm okay. Like, but it was... I think hilarious. Like, like me and my, I don't ever forget the girl Anna who did the film with me. We were dying of laughter. We thought it was like the funniest thing ever. Especially because they were so like strict about like oh. not sitting on it only when you're acting. And it's like, of course, that happens on but, that couch in that house. What were the odds? It was yeah. crazy. The best part was like how like the director treated it. The director literally acted like someone died on that spot. He was like, didn't want it like it was like also because he was like a guy right so it made him like super uncomfortable (laughs) did they allow you to finish the film or did they Uh, yeah and they they cleaned the couch right like like could you could you imagine girl gets period gets kicked off film set (laughs) yeah that'll be something that'll that'll be great (laughs) that'll be some controversy there especially in this day and age right oh i know (laughs) well that was my most hilarious story some would argue the most embarrassing but that did not embarrass me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, well, I'm going to leave that in the episode. I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get embarrassed, huh? That's it. I mean, it takes a lot. Like, for instance, that did not embarrass me. It really didn't. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot, okay? My fiance is the opposite. She, like, gets embarrassed for other people who are getting embarrassed. Like, we're watching, like, uh, Impractical Jokers, right? Have you heard of that show, Impractical Jokers? Oh, I have heard of that, yeah. Yeah, They do, like, pranks in public, and it's very uncomfortable, like, the positions they put themselves in. So I'm watching it, I'm laughing with and I look at her, and she's just, like, like, freaking out, like, secondhand Uh, embarrassment. (laughs) Like, she's an empath. She's, like, freaking out about it. Empath. I like that. It's a good one. Yeah, you're, like, the opposite because you're, like, ah, whatever. If that happens to me. Yeah, the director was way more embarrassed than I was. I was, like, relax. It's blood. That's crazy. Well, last question I'm going to ask you is this. I always like to talk about vitamin G, which is gratitude. I believe it's the strongest vitamin in the world, and it's anti-inflammatory, instant (laughs) healing. So, (laughs) <laughs> do you agree with that <laughs> i add it in my broth every day i love that yeah i could tell i could tell it's in there um what are you grateful for today okay i'm massively grateful for my puppies like massively i know paco something. paco and poppy poppy and, and then the, there's a new one coming either paloma or paolo depending on i'm very in between a male and a female I why the peas why why the peas what's going on there I just like it you know i started with petal and piper who have since passed on and they were chihuahuas right so then paco came along he needed to be pee and fit in with his spanish siblings 
So now it's just, you know, been a thing. I love it. Okay. So you're grateful for them. What else? Um, I'm really, really grateful for Beauty and the Broth. It's something I'm massively proud of. It's something sometimes I wake up and pinch myself that, you know, regardless what happens, like I created something, I did it all on my own. And I get, I get overwhelmed sometimes, like, like in, in an emotional way to see like, we have like a real customer base. It's wild from all 50 states. And, and, you know, I'm not someone with some food background with some, you know, genius CPG consumer packaged goods. Background. <laughs> um, so the fact that it's doing so well and when people, we have some customers that really like all me and like, thank you. Thank you so much. Your product saved my life. Your product helped my life. Um, it's really, really, it makes me feel very grateful and very humbled by the whole experience. So I, I feel very, very fortunate to have had this whole experience and journey. It's very cool. Yeah, I love it. And you're just getting started. Um, what I learned from Landmark, by the way, which we just spoke about offline is uh, whenever I hit a goal, it's like celebrate it. And then it's like, okay, 100% left to go. It's like, just keep yes. striving forward because nothing in this world stays the same. Either you're creating or disintegrating. So I say that because although you've made some great progress already, it's just the beginning. You know, you have the bark coming out. You got the, uh, the vision of it being in vending machines and airports and all that. So it'll be great to see your progression here and uh, also hear about your work with uh, Will Cole and the, your, regarding your health. Um, so Melissa, I want to acknowledge you for uh, coming on my podcast. I had a pleasure uh, speaking with you today. I had a lot of fun researching you and your, your history is amazing. I love that you took your pain and took it into a purpose and you're doing some great things that I get to benefit from, my audience <laughs> gets to benefit from. So everybody go get Beauty and the Broth. We'll put a link down below. Uh, where else can they go find you, social media, et cetera? On social media, you can find us at the Beauty and the Broth, thebeautyandthebroth.com. And you can find me at Melissa Bologna. We'll put all of that down below and uh, we'll have you back in the future when you roll out the bark stuff and all the new things. I cannot wait. That sounds great. This was a sincere pleasure and a lot of fun. Hopefully you, my, um, my hilarious story goes over well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it does. If it doesn't, you know, that's not our problem. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs>